G'day everybody, Andrew Maher here. Welcome to the Blueprint Finals. Hopes are still alive after a win against Brisbane on Saturday night and with more impressive performances from a couple of the kids like Levi Casbolt and Tommy Bell, we've got Carlton recruiting, national recruiting manager Shane Rogers in to talk list development. It's going to be fascinating. Remember, remember, if you want to get involved in today's show, you can send in your questions and comments via Twitter, hashtag the blueprint. Back to join me this week. We missed him last week, former champion of the club and captain of the footy club, Mark McClure. Lovely to have you back, Sellers. G'day, Andy. How are you? Good, mate. Good. And um, another solid win, a win they had to have, and sets up a really, really important game this Saturday for us. Yeah, I thought they were pretty good. They brought in some new kids, a lot of kids down back. I really liked uh, Simon and White, and I like McGuinness, and I like Watson down there. Young kids playing against a, a pretty experienced forward line. When you talk about Brown, White was a terrific against yep. him. So it was good experience for them. Good to see the youth coming into the side and doing what they they're doing a man who's charged with the responsibility of bringing more of that youth into the footy club is Shane Rogers, the National Recruiting Manager, and he's been good enough to join us. Lovely to have you on the blueprint, Shane. Good of you to come in. Thanks, boys. Thanks very much. Imagine there'll be a lot of Carlton supporters really interested in what you've got to offer, and we'll, we'll pull it all apart in a minute, but let's focus on the game from Saturday night. Um, what did you like about it most, Sellers? Oh, they had to fight hard, and they're not playing at their best. They're nowhere near that. Brisbane are not the best side in the competition, but they, they won the game. They won it with better skills, most, basically what I saw. Uh, their tackle count was reasonable, wasn't up to where they would like it to be. There's a few things that they're not quite ready, I don't think, to play finals. But we've got some more players coming in, and they play Essendon this week, the arch enemy, as yep. we all know. And there's only four games you want to win, two against Collingwood, two against Essendon. <laughs> if you can't win the big one, <laughs> if yeah. If you can't win the big one. So I think that that'll be another, another little, uh, little step forward to see if they can play in the finals because they still have a mathematical chance which means you've got no hope. Shane, the man in charge of recruiting must like you never like seeing you know big injury lists but when it gives opportunities to some of these young kids that have come to the club it must well, gladden so. your heart when you see them stand up. It's been a real positive you know out of a negative becomes a positive uh, we've had five players make their debut I think five players we've found that might play a fair bit of footy for Carlton which at the start of the year we didn't know yep. so that's that's been the positive for us and obviously it's disappointing the way we've gone but this is a massive positive with the kids coming through. No, what do you make of the three defenders I talked about before? Uh, McGuinness has had a really good five, six games. Mm. I actually spoke to Kevin Sheen trying to get him a, a Rising Star nomination, but it didn't work. Right. So uh, he, he was said, very good. He's been good for a long time. He's strong, cool, yeah. calm. He makes good decisions with Com the footy. Competitive. He's competitive. Mm. You know. Um, sorry, who were the other boys? Watson. Watson. Oh, w Watson was a bit stiff to go out the first time, mm. I think. Uh, he, he's really developed as a player. He's still got a long way to go, but he's, he's not even 19. Yeah. So, you know, key position players take 21, 22, 23 before they come good. So we're, we're very keen and confident on him. He needs a fitness campaign. He's too heavy. He does. Uh, he's, not, he's not agile enough. Uh, he has great foot skills, as we've seen. Beautiful. And, and, and we're not certain where he's actually best suited to play, and I'm sure you're feeling the same way. Probably a little bit. As a, the coaches often ask me, you know, where was his position as an under-18 player? And you go, well, he, he's... Best form of defence was his attack. Yeah. He was reading the game better than most of the kids. It wasn't he was using his physical size or strength. Mm. And then if he got the ball, it was 65 metres right yeah. down someone's throat. So he's an attacking weapon. And the other one was Simon White. Simon White. He's Played a really Brownie, good story. You know? Yeah, great story. Undersized. Come back, second game back for the club this year. Uh, missed 12 weeks, basically, of injury. It's great to see he, he's really well liked and respected around the club. It's great to see good good people make it. Should we start the campaign to try and make sure that Eddie Betts is front and centre when the All Australian side gets selected? You know they like putting in a small forward or two, and he's just come of age, hasn't he? His last he couple has. of years have been outstanding, and he was good again the other night. He was, and Dennis Arnfield had a hand in both of those. He's a rookie list player, and there's a chance for all kids in this game, if you watch this, mm. that Betts may have been on the end, and you watch the next one, it's exactly the same. It was a good work by Waite to push the ball down, push it down to, to Garlett, and then Garlett with a handoff, handoff to Arnfield again, who backs up. A huge run from the wing down to the forward line, and then Eddie on the end of it again. So, there's a whole lot in just Eddie kicking the goal. There's other players as well who have assist, and Arnfield was in both of those. Where's Levi Casbolt going to get his footy to, Shane? We're all excited about his capacity to take a competitive mark, and we saw him do it a few times the other night. Where can he take his footy, this fella? I think the best thing about Levi is he actually is a competitor. He actually crashes packs, which mm. we've been missing for a while. Uh, obviously, with the injuries, he got his chance. Mm. His kicking's got to improve, yep. as we've seen. We yep. all know that. He came in, uh, he kicked 40 goals, 10 in the TAC in his last year. 
looked awkward but kicked goals. So we're hoping that he can get back to that level. He kicked this one. Can you believe it from no. the boundary? <laughs> Ten yards out dead in front, he's got no hope. Yeah, but he's got off, some chance. Know? He's got some chance. I think he's a good kid. I like his style. He's, uh, he actually, I'd like to see his movement sideways, backwards, start to work on those sorts of things. His fitness level needs to rise. He's not quite strong enough yet to do that. And, and with that will come his kicking. We saw, we saw uh, Tommy Hawkins kick poorly for four years. And then all of a sudden now he's become a player because he's confident. That'll happen with And him he too. had time in the system. Absolutely. Levi came in to play his first game for the club off the back of a PCL injury. We just had no one left. Yep. He did a fantastic job. He should get a, a medal of bravery to play in that first game that he played. Actually, the injuries um, may not have helped Carlton to get to the finals. But I tell you what, it's helped the recruiting guys show that they <laughs> have got some talent to pick some talent. And, and that's been the most special part of the last five or six weeks. Well, it's interesting. Some of the supporters don't realise, and, and some go to the Northern Blues and have a look, but... We've got a bit of talent down there, and we, they've been out injured as well. It's not an excuse, but it's a fact. And so we got our players back about two weeks ago, and we played Casey, who were the top team in the VFL, and we won by 100 points. Yeah. Mm. We've still got six blokes yeah. out, but we're going, we're going okay. We've got a fair bit of talent. Bryce, we, yeah, sorry, go, oh, I was just going to say, we, we're not happy with the talent we've got. We've got to find more, but we're confident that the blokes are there they're going to do the job for Ross us. Ross Gibbs was elite, number one, we all know that. And he cops his fair stick from Carlton mm -hmm. supporters. Some say that he should be a more dominant midfielder than we've seen from him. We know that he's been used across our back as a set-up guy. 33, I think it was the other night, and probably his best game for the year. Is In a perfect world, would we have the sort of list that would mean Gibbs can be a genuine midfielder without needing to go back? I think so. I think Bryce plays his best footy in the midfield as a centreman just the free-flowing running player. Mm. He's often maligned. Mark Wall was maligned as well. Yeah. You know, if, if you've got a lot of talent and skill sometimes, and, and there's no doubt sometimes Bryce has to do a little bit better than he does, but he's a super player. Yeah. We wouldn't change him for the world. Totally agree with that. 33 possessions the other night, only seven contested. Yeah. Um, you'd like from some of your leaders a little bit more of that, but you know what? That's what he's got, and that's what he's got to give. Be good at what you are, and I think that's I think what so. he is. That's a good point. I reckon when you come in, you know you, what your strengths and weaknesses yeah. are, and you can try and improve, but... Really, you've got, to, you've got to play to your strengths. Yeah, but he still needs to work on those He things. does. Can to talk to you about one thing I've been banging on about this year with people who've been coming in is the personality of the list. And I wonder whether the captaincy, uh, as brief as it's been for Mark Murphy, might prove to be a really good thing for him. Heath Scotland Tote spoke about Mark Murphy's uh, leadership role after the game on Saturday night. The leadership of Mark Murphy in particular as well since Chris has been out has been exceptional and the group's really just lifted in the last four weeks. What I think we've won three out of four and since his absence. So uh, direction and leadership out there has really improved with the responsibility of other players having to step up. I that's, keep the on. that's the end of Juddy. He's well, gone. He's gone. Yeah, no doubt about that. Oh, look, he was terrific. He's been good. Yep. Okay, but I mean, I really enjoy what they're doing. It's a different frame of mind, different people, person talking. Juddy's an introvert, as we sort of know mm. and we understand. Mark's, Mark Murphy is a, a natural speaker, a natural uh, attracted to people. I think he's one of those sort of guys. So it's been a nice change for the players. But Juddy will come back and take control. And I wonder whether that's a factor for you. When you're looking at players to bring into the club, you've got all the beeps and all the verticals and all the data now at your disposal and you know how to read that better than we do, but the, the competitive instinct that lives in here and, and that gregarious type extroverted personality, do you think we need a bit more of that at the footy club? Uh, we probably do. We definitely need more leaders and that, that's an individual thing. You don't have to be a, an outgoing extrovert to be a leader. Yep. Um, it helps. But we've got some young blokes on our list and I won't mention them, but they're a bit like that, but they haven't had a taste of senior footy yet. The competitive nature of a kid coming into Carlton Footy Club, we want everything they've got. We yeah. don't want half, we don't want three quarters, we want everything. So that we're competitive as going out to look for these players, so we want them to be that when they get to Carlton. Leadership's measured in lots of ways. You don't have to be, you know, to be able to talk well or do anything. You can lead by being the best tackler in the competition. You can lead by being the best trainer at 18 years of age. You can yes. do all those things, and, and sometimes we need to develop that. And, and sometimes I, I've worried about, the la until the last five or six weeks, we haven't seen any of these kids. That's Why? Right. Yeah, it's a good point. Does it do your head in as a recruiter? You bring these guys into the club and you know what they've... You, you probably know more than the coaches do sometimes what they've got to offer and yet sometimes they don't get a run at it. And I'll throw a name at you. Kane Lucas is one that Carlton supporters say, why aren't we seeing more of Kane Lucas this year? Yeah, Kane Le Lucas is an interesting one. Most clubs ask me about him every weekend. We go, no, no, he's a required player. You know, we're, we're going through the process. Kane's got to get a little bit better at being competitive. Kane's a really good player and we, we believe in him. Um... People would say, well, did you make a mistake with the pick? Some people would say yes. I don't think we have. Yep. I think there's a player underneath, and I think we saw that in his first year when he played nine games, that he can play at the level. So we've got to get him back on track. 
How we do that is still a great unknown, yeah. but obviously playing would help. Yeah. Looks like to me he's lacks confidence now. Yes. He's been busted a bit and he needs to get back on the bike and just really work hard and yeah. get himself up and, and compete. Maybe as a tagger, I'd like to see him as a run with role he so he gets that. himself right into the, into the game. One of the things, like I just said, as a player you've got to take some responsibility on Absolutely. that yourself. So if you're not getting a game, you've got to try something different. You've got to go and knock on Rats' door, yeah. you know, why aren't I getting a game? And I know Rats did that when he was a player. He went and knocked on David Parkins' door. The continuity, continuity of football is the most important. Sort of a couple of Carlton supporters would probably be disappointed that Andrew Collins was left out of the side last week. We thought, thought that his curve was heading in the right direction. Well, the good news for me is, Andy, I don't have any influence you on the You're picking the side. So I can't help you with that. Free yeah. agency is going to change everything. You know, we think it is going to have, whether it has a dramatic imp impact or a minor impact. We've got yeah. three... Uh, unrestricted slash restricted free agents this year. Um, I'm not going to ask you whether they're going to be at the club next year, or but you can certainly let us know whether there's been any interest in any of those guys. Oh, look, there hasn't been. Mm. Um, and not to say that they're not interested in our players, it's just they wouldn't come and tell us if they were. Yep. Uh, the players might be doing that on their own, we don't know. Uh, we go through a number of processes with other teams' players and we, we meet as a list management committee and discuss a lot of those sort of issues, but as to whether anyone's chasing our players, we wouldn't know. Yep. One, will re one will remain on that list and the other two will go. Um, well, do, you actually, to, do you want to say which one? Do I have to? Um, <laughs> you don't have to, no. It'd be good if you did. <laughs> Listen, you may have not have any, uh, in, in, any choice in selection. Do the coaching staff and everything else have a choice in what you do? Uh, they try and influence us a little bit. And look, uh, most people would understand throughout the year there's a draft pool. Mm. Throughout the year, we can't pick those certain types of players. You know, these players succeed well. So you, the best the best player, and we always term it, we're picking the best available player. It's not actually one to a hundred. Mm. It's best player based on all the attributes that, you know, we come up with during the year that actually help us fit our need as well as being the best player. What do we require? What is the requirements of the footy club to, to improve? Well, we have list management and... People throw up key position players. You've got a five-man, just to clear that up, you've got yes. a five-man list management committee. Greg Swan, Andy McKay, Brett Ratton, Wayne Hughes and myself. Yep. So we meet every two weeks basically and go through the process of who's on, who's off, and it changes from week to week. Um, sorry, what was your question again, Mark? Who, what we need. What, what we, need. we need. My personal view is speed is the king. So if we can get more quick players into our team, you know, we, we see Jeff Gart, we see Dennis Armfield, they have a real impact at AFL level. If you can kick and you've got to be a competitor. If so they, we're really looking for competitive people. If they said to you, that's the other four on the committee or three or whatever yes. it is, you've got to go and we're going to, do, we're going to get cloak. Would you fight that decision? I would if I didn't agree with it, yes. Do you think we need him? Do you, does our list profile look like a list profile to you that needs a sort of Goliath in attack? It's interesting. From week to week it changes, depending on who you play. Some weeks you actually need a big, strong key forward. Other weeks you need speedy, medium-sized players, about 190, that can play multiple roles. So it, it's, I'm not trying to dodge the question. No. Yep. But it, it's funny. Footy's changed a lot. Casbolt, Rowe, Mitchell, they're the ones that you want to develop into that spot too. They're on our list. Tommy Hawkins, who you mentioned before, yeah. has been on Geelong's list for six years. Yep. Uh, Geelong's one of the clubs that draft and just sit and wait and have some patience. I reckon we're at that point, Carlton, haven't been used to that before. Um, it's been a, there's the best player, let's go out and buy him. The rules have changed. We've got a draft and we've got to embrace the draft, the supporters and, and the footy club. And we, look, none of us know how good, say, a Tom Bell's going to be down the track, but we've all been excited about what we've seen in three or four games. And you don't have to dive into the deep end to no. get talent. They're actually out there. And, I mean, this guy came from a very obscure part of the football community. Morningside in Queensland. And you can just see he's got great balance. He's a good tackler. He's very strong over the ball. And that comes from his rugby days, I would have thought, in Queensland. And he does throw him into the ground. That's probably three weeks penalty, <laughs> but still. And he can kick a goal. And, and we saw another one the other day as well. But he, he is, uh, he's, he's a sort of star of the making. I think he needs to probably to lose a bit of weight, become a more elite runner, Jessica's more pace. Star. He's got good pace, but he I really, I'd like to see him better in that area. He could come, he could tag. I reckon he could almost play centre half back in some places. He's he, such a, a, a tall guy. Tommy Bell runs a 16 beep. I've never <laughs> yeah. witnessed one before, apart from this kid. This yeah. disappoints me. This is the only thing that disappoints me. Well, you can have it. Yeah. Well, you know what? 
did he win Tesla? No, he didn't. He kicked, <laughs> he kicked an, or, or an average goal that you should kick and you're expected to kick. I'll pass you don't it need to win. celebrate. Yeah, please do. I will. Give him my number as well. <laughs> and, um, and you don't need to celebrate like that. He's on his third game of league football. Yes, he, right. needs to, he needs to actually knuckle down and be better at all the other things, to tackle, to chase, all those things. That's what he wants. I'd celebrate that. If you you used to stand up there like the Statue of Liberty with a ball above your head for about five minutes. Every I can't remember. <laughs> I've got some vision of it. We'll have it in the show I'm next not, week. I don't want to know. I want to ask you a difficult question. I don't know whether you can answer this. Casbolt looks like he might be able to develop into the forward who can pinch hit for 10 or 15, 20% of the time in the ruck. If you believe that about Levi Casbolt, it looks to me like we've got at least one too many ruckmen on our list. Do you agree that that would be a fair assessment? I personally don't, but I can see why you'd believe that. Yep. And it becomes, again, it's a bit like that other stuff we talked about. It's a, it's a personal club culture that if you ask Rats, he might say the same. Yep. I personally think you should probably have four, and they're all at varying stages too that can play straight away. Yep. One is a, a fairly close development player and the other one's a totally development player that you just sit on your list. Yep. Ruckman are really hard to find, and we had Sammy Jacobs, but he was... He was taken away from us yeah. without our uh, approval. Yep. He was too good for us. He was too good for us. He beat us. <laughs> <laughs> so in those days, we used to have the arguments, is four too many? And yeah. you go, well, no. As it's turned out, now we've only got three, and now we've got three people say we've got too many. So two, we're running out of time. Two really quick ones. Do you yep. think we're going to be active from a trade perspective, which is kind of, you're part of that list management, but it's not going to be your decision and yours alone. Do you think we'll be active in that area? One of the good things about Carlton, we're active regardless of whether something happens. We're one of the clubs that actually go out and, and aggressively try and find people. What have you learned about Carlton being a um, recruiting person and actually maybe you're probably now a supporter. What do you like about our supporters? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Uh, look, I think. Be honest. I, I just think we should we should learn to have a bit more patience with the way the rules have changed. I, th I don't think a lot of people have embraced the draft properly. Mm. It's not about, you know, we've got some kids. Lukey Mitchell's people are screaming. Oh, he's been on the list for two years. Yeah, he's so nineteen what? years of age. So what exactly? Yeah. Yeah. Paddy McCarthy the same. They're yeah. both one ninety six, one ninety seven. Mm. Lukey Mitchell's an aggressive key forward that we think will be a player in the future, and that's the one we're screaming out for. You Absolutely. talk about competitiveness. Yes. Don't worry, our, our supporters are pretty competitive. <laughs> They're competitive. <laughs> they are competitive. Uh, mate, it's been terrific to have you on. Uh, that's all we've got time for today. You can join Shane and Sellers in the Google Any Plus questions? Hangout after the show. No, sure. we're going to save those for the Google okay. Plus Hangout. After. You're going to be exposed to a couple Thank of current supporters <laughs> after this, so you can uh, look forward to that. Remember, you can tweet or email us comments and questions via Twitter, hashtag the blueprint, or email the club with the blueprint in the subject line, blues at carltonfc.com.au. Thanks so much for coming on. I'm sure Carlton supporters would like to actually listen to you for a bit longer, but we do only have time for this today. Good luck. Absolutely Thank you. terrific. Thanks Loved every second of it. Shane Rogers, the National Recruiting Manager for the Carlton Footy Club. See you next week. Thank you, mate. We'll be back the same time, 1pm next Tuesday, right here, carltonfc.com.au. Until then, let's beat the Bombers and see you later.